Hello, architects. Are you building event-driven systems and wondering when you save a record to a database and you need to publish an event? Which one do you do first? Do you publish the event first and then persist to the database? Do you persist to the database and then publish the event? And what happens if one completes and the other doesn't? Then you've got inconsistency across your entire application. There's a solution to this problem, you see. And in this video, we're going to have a look at how you can leverage change data capture to actually build a more consistent and reliable event publishing system so that you know when you publish an event that that record has been successfully persisted to the database. And to demonstrate that, we're going to stick with our same application we've been looking at in this entire video series. And we have as part of our create order handler the record comes in from the API call that gets saved to the queue. You remember we're using storage first APIs. There's a link in the description to storage first APIs if you're not familiar. We take the record from the queue and we have this create order command. And once you've got the create order command, we create a new order and then we persist that to the database right down at the bottom here. And this order repository you can see is simply just a DynamoDB database. When we store the order in the database, we're using the put item API call of DynamoDB, and then we're just persisting the data of that order to our database. And one thing you'll notice in this create order handler, there is no event publishing happening. There's nothing happening with our events, but remember we're building an event-driven system. So you're thinking, James, where, where are these events? Where have the events gone? And this is where you're going to use a feature of DynamoDB that's really, really powerful for building systems like this, and that is DynamoDB Streams. So if you go and have a look at the actual CDK project now under architecturepatterns.net.cdk and have a look at the data persistence file. And this data persistence file is where you're just creating the DynamoDB table. We're using the CDK here. So we, um, you create a new table and you'll notice as I, if that tooltip stopped really annoyingly popping up in the middle of a recording, you'll see down at the bottom here, we have this stream option and you can set the stream view type and the stream view type can be set to either new or old keys, new or old. The difference here being new and old images means that the stream will contain both the previous value and the new value. So if you update an existing record in Dynamo, you'll get both the old and the new. New, as you'd expect, just gives you the new. Old just gives you the old. And keys only gives you only the partition and sort key of the record that has been changed. So once you've enabled DynamoDB streams in your um, DynamoDB table, you can then hook that up. So if you go and have a look now at my orders stack, and again, we're in the CDK project here, we're just creating the Lambda functions and all the code that we need. You see, you've got this order status change event publisher. And it's this order status change event publisher that's actually going to make the do the publishing to our database so if we go and have a look at the declaration of this you see we're creating a new dotnet function this could be a typescript function a java function that doesn't particularly matter so much but if we scroll right through this now you see we're first granting our function permissions to publish to our event bus and then we're using this add event source method on the lambda function object in the cdk and we're adding a dynamo event source and this dynamo event source takes in, of course, a um, DynamoDB table. So we're passing in the order data store. And then there's a bunch of properties you have um, additionally that you can set here. So you can set any filters, look at what happens on failure, how much parallelization to do, retry attempts, all of this good stuff that you might expect from any kind of stream processing functionality. But you're just going to leave that as the default for the minute. We're just hooking up DynamoDB stream to our Lambda function. And it's simple as that. So we've got a Lambda function defined here, ready to go. We have a stream. Now, what's the benefit of doing this? I hear you ask. And that is that now when the record is persisted to the database, 
the order will only be streamed out the other side to your event publisher once that has been successfully persisted to your database. So the fact that a record meets the order status change lambda function, well, you can guarantee now that's been persisted. And now you can publish that event and you can handle that failure of publishing the event because you know you can guarantee that you only need to republish the event. So let's have a look at the event publishing lambda function now. So if we open up the order status change event function, have a look at the function itself, and you'll see the record that comes into the Lambda function is a DynamoDB event. And a DynamoDB DB event, much like SQS and SNS, has a list of records. So you see we've got this records property, and then we're gonna process each individual record. Within there, you have, you have this DynamoDB stream record. Now, one of the most important properties on that stream record is the event name. And this will tell you if it's been an insert, a create, a put, a modify, something's been exist, something existing has been updated, or if that's a remove, something's been deleted. And of course, here we're interested in inserts because we're trying to publish an order created event. So once you know that this is an insert record into your orders table, you can then stream off the back of that. We DC realize the order, we actually read the order from that event that comes in. If you remember, we set the stream type to be new and old images. So we get the entire DynamoDB object. You stream that out to your order and then you publish the event to EventBridge. This now means that records get streamed out, as they get created, events get published, everyone's happy. And of course, if you wanted to handle other types of events, let's say you wanted to handle order updated, order deleted events, you could publish them as well. You could have an additional um, else if in here, and if the record dot event type happens to equal record dot event name, not event type, James, event name equals operation type dot modify. Okay, now we can handle an order updated event. And you might even get even more specific. You might say, you know, if the record, um, the actual record and the, let's say on the new image, let's say the status property is equal to um, cancelled as an example, well, then you can handle the cancel. So if an order gets cancelled, you might want to publish a more specific event. So you might then change this to be a new order cancelled event rather than just publishing a generic order updated event, you might want to get more specific to your domain. You might want to use domain events. And if you're not familiar with domain events or the different types of events, then you can check out my video on different event types. Of course, the link is in the description. Let's undo all of this because we don't want to handle that updated event just yet. So we'll get rid of all of that. And you'll see that this, the other benefit of doing this is that it keeps your Lambda functions with a real single purpose. You can look at the list of all your functions and know exactly what each one is doing. So you'll see here, we've got the create order handler. We've got the get order status handler. We've got the order status change event publisher. So you're having a problem with publishing events. Well, you don't need to remember which Lambda function is publishing events and which type of event gets published when each different thing in DynamoDB happens. You've got a single source of truth here that you can go and look at to then see all of the different events that are being published. It almost acts as a kind of anti-corruption layer, a kind of boundary for your system for you to then publish external integration events that other systems can consume. So that's a really quick video on change data capture using DynamoDB and using that to publish the events and guarantee that a record is both persisted and the event is published and you don't end up with your system in any kind of inconsistent state. As always, if you've liked this video, then please like and please subscribe. I would really appreciate your feedback. And of course, I will see you all next week.